Hey, how's it going everyone? GC Performance here, back with another video. And today we're gonna to be finding out whether or not deep dish carbon wheels are actually faster than your stock alloy wheels that come on the bike. Uh, what we have here is the Tarmac SL7 Comp. It's a stock bike as is. I actually reverted it back from my carbon wheels in there. Uh, so these are the stock alloy that you'll find pretty much on almost every single entry level bike. And uh, what we're gonna be doing is running the same test with stock wheels over a course of seven miles. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come back to the same spot. We're gonna swap out the same tires, the same tubes, the same cassette, the same rotors. And we're gonna be testing on that same exact road to figure out what the power savings are, how much the time difference is, and the same amount of, uh, of speed that we're doing at the same time. Uh, and the way we're gonna be doing this is we're gonna be testing it with these uh, Favero Asimov pedals. They're actually the sponsor of this video. They are available, I believe, for $770. I believe they come in at 152 grams for the set. They're compatible with look, and the best thing about it as well is that I don't even have to change off my existing look heel uh, cleats from my existing shoes, even though they do send out a pair of extra cleats to swap out with. Um, they are a uh, proprietary charging that hooks right onto the actual axle itself, and then it was very easy setup from there. Uh, all we had to do was just go ahead and download the app, you go ahead and pair it, and then it just goes ahead and automatically um, calibrates the power meter for you. So thank you again for Vivero for sending this out. I will put a link down below in the description if you guys are interested in these pedals. They're one of the best out there. I know a lot of you have been using them. They're comparison to the Garmin X Rally. And also, uh, in my opinion, I like a pedal-based power meter. I think they perform a little bit better than a crank-based power meter because you're putting power directly into that axle or that spindle, uh, whether or not going into the chain ring and you can have other loose variables than that. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be taking the data off there, measuring the water save, the speed gain, the time differences. And uh, the only reason why we chose seven miles of the course of it is just to kind of get a long enough distance go ahead and figure out that uh, that time period for the bike. So the reason why I wanted to do this test is because working in the store, I have a lot of people come into the store ask about uh, what's the best upgrade that they can do for their bike. And I always recommend deep dish carbon wheels. Uh, the reason for it is because it is at a benefit that you see right off the bat. I know it's an extreme cost. It's almost sometimes the price of the bike, but it makes one of the biggest differences. And it's, it not only does it make the, the ride sometimes more comfortable, it's more responsive, it, uh, it engages quicker, everything. So it really is, it lightens up the bike as well. And then aesthetically as well, it makes the bike look much, much meaner as well. So the wheels I'm using for the test are gonna be the Loon Hyper 65 millimeter deep dish wheels, carbon uh, dish, carbon spokes, ceramic bearings. And yeah, I'm excited for it. So let's get on the bike. Okay, so for this test that I'm doing, the power number that I've chosen to stay around is about 180. Uh, reason for that is that majority of the time when people come in, they always ask me about deep dish wheels. They're always wondering whether or not they'll get that added benefit at a entry level speed or whatever. So I'm about 20 miles an hour right now with alloy wheels at 180 power. Uh, I'm doing my best to keep it right around 180. And again, I'm not changing hand positions. I'm not going up and down, I'm not doing any of that. But I wanna keep this 180 watts of power for the whole seven mile test. I'm not gonna stand on any incline. And the course that I'm riding, I think if anything, is literally like maybe two, 3% elevation or gradient the entire time. So it should be pretty nice. One little thing I noticed as well, is going over that small, small little gradient. It's how hard it is to stay at 180 power. Uh, it's very difficult. You wanna get up and go. That's something you're used to, but I don't know, it felt really weird. But back at it. Now those two little things that we just went over, the upper hill that I just did with the incline, I try to stay pedaling the entire time. And then that little, <laughs> whatever you guys are called that, I know I know a lot of you guys aren't in Florida, but that's like just like a little decline that you usually kick it up around. But again, I try to keep it around 180 watts. And just for reference, I'm about six foot, 190 pounds. I gotta get rid of my stomach muscle. Yeah, I think the hardest part, coming up about five miles, of this challenge is, is uh, not being able to move my hands when they go numb. 
and also my soft tissue area. I really want to stand up right now, but I'm not. But yeah, my hands are definitely killing me right now. But it's all in the name of science. Ding, 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 ding. All right. You can turn here if you want. All right, so we just got done with the first seven miles. I tried my best to stay in the position as long as I could. The thing I noticed the most was that my hand's going numb and I wanted to shake them as much as I could, but I did not. And also there are a lot of riders on the road being that it's Saturday and such beautiful weather today. There's literally no wind. Um, so I tried to, if I saw a rider coming up, I get out to not get any kind of draft or any kind of help, um, but I can't control that. But as of right there, I was doing about 180 watts the entire way, um, maybe up or down there, there back. But, uh, and I was about like 19.9, 20 miles an hour the entire time. I got a feeling that with those carbon wheels, I'm just gonna take a guess, that's gonna be much easier to sustain that. If not, I'll even get maybe a speed boost. I'm thinking about a mile to two miles an hour faster with today's weather. It's, it's literally flat and no wind at all, so excited. All right, so we just got finished with the first seven miles of the ride. We averaged about 19.9 to 20 miles an hour at 180 watts. The ride went smooth. We had a, we had a, a nice wind the entire time. We came back to the area, we went ahead and swapped out everything from the bike. Uh, we put on the carbon fiber wheels, they're 65 millimeter Loon Hyper uh, deep dish wheels, carbon fiber rim, carbon fiber spokes, ceramic bearings. I changed over the exact same tires, the exact same tubes, the exact same rotors, everything we kept the same. Aesthetically, first thing on the bat, they look amazing compared to stock wheels. 1300 bucks for a pair of wheels to get some, some good free speed, if you can buy it, will definitely make a difference. So I'm excited to see what the results are. So let's get into it. when I put on these wheels. I find it much harder to be able to control the 180. And this is no BS. I don't know if it's the wheels just want to push you further. But that's kind of what I always talked about with deep dish wheels. They always feel like they just want to go and they help you maintain that top end speed so easily. I can literally just go ahead and keep on pedaling and not put down a lot of force and they want to take off the entire time. All right, so we just finished up with the second test, the seven miles with the deep dish Loon Wind Space Hyper wheels, 65 millimeters, uh, noticeably faster. I'm not gonna lie to you. So my average on this ride was 20.4 uh, miles an hour, whereas the average on the ride with the aluminum rims was 19.9. So a difference of 0.5 miles an hour faster, so pretty much a half a mile an hour you're getting. Um, cadence was dead on also, it was about 80 RPM the entire ride. The only thing difference was is that on this ride with the carbon fiber wheels, my average wattage was like 185, whereas on my aluminum wheels was 178. So the only thing I could say that with these wheels, I found myself having to slow down more, like these wheels want to push me more, and that's probably where you'll see the biggest differences. I really want to do this test at this speed because I want to see if it made a difference at this type of speed, like 18, 19, 20. I know once you get up to those higher end speeds or you get into a group, those deeper dish wheels will do a lot of the work for you. But I just felt when I was carrying myself, carrying that cadence, it was a lot easier to go ahead and pedal uh, and hold that speed than I did with the aluminum wheels itself. So, but the wheels were phenomenal. It felt really good. One thing I can say about this test, my hands, I don't wear gloves and I'm riding these alloy bars and my hands were killing me the entire time. It was very hard to stay still, um, but it was, it was a really good ride. I had a blast doing it. It was good data. We're gonna have up here on my screenshot as well all the time. Uh, we'll screenshot what the average ride time was for each ride to show the time differences and we'll have all the numbers as well. So but yeah, thank you guys again so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.